Hey, Elise. Hey, SB. Hey, what are we, what are we doing here today? What do you got here? We're gonna play Blood Bowl. We're gonna play Blood Bowl? I love Blood Bowl. Or something like that. We're gonna try to play Blood, blood Bowl? Blood but, Bowl. Blood Bowl. We are buds. Blood bowl. We are buds and we're <laughs> playing Blood Bowl. Oh boy. Let's have, some, let's have some Blood Bowl. So we're just gonna create a team real quick. Okay. Take some rats, some yeah, rat men. I love rats. Alright, scaven team. Strengths, uh, they're real fast. Weaknesses, gutter runners are too good. The primary this weakness is, is that gutter runners are too good at the game. Yep. <laughs> it's uh, pretty funny that that's it is, a it is not joking. So if you're not familiar with Blood Bowl, it is not joking there when it says most players are fragile. This is an extremely violent game. Uh, it is entirely likely that some mm -hmm. more players will die during this first game. Go ahead and, uh, go ahead and hit it. Okay. Thought I hit it. Okay. Thought you hit it. Oh, look at you! <laughs> You're so stinky. He, yeah, he looks like he smells. I can, I can see how bad he smells from here. He flies everywhere. So what's Blood Bowl, Elise? Blood Bowl is a game like football set in the Warhammer universe where people die and get hurt a lot. Yeah, I would and there's say, wizards and stuff. I see. For clarity, when she says like football, she means American football, yeah, not sorry. not soccer. It's really um, it's a little closer to rugby, I think, because of okay, the way the okay, whatever. Well, I was just saying because the way the ball works. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of a rugby American football type game. It's very uh, violent, and really, it sounds like an action game. It sounds like a sports game. Yeah. But uh, really, it's a it's a strategy, a turn based strategy board game. Uh, that I think is fantastic. I have always loved Blood Bowl. This is, this is great. <laughs> is that, have you found your logo? Oh yeah, that's gotta be All it. Alright. Throw a, throw a name on that team. So we're gonna be in this video creating a team and then taking them through a single game. I love Blood Bowl and I've played a ton of it and I, I don't want to say that I'm the best Blood Bowl player in the world, so I will merely say that I may be the best Blood Bowl player in the world. At least, how good are you at Blood Bowl? Uh, I'm not awesome. When's the last time you played a game of Blood Bowl? Years ago. Okay. Uh, so, obviously you're great. Um, what, she, <laughs> what she needs to say is she's great. And so we'll be talking about strategy and explaining basic game concepts. Uh, not for her benefit, but of course for you, the viewers. Look, it looks like cheese. She already knows all this stuff. Yes, I think that's the idea. Perfect. Elise, do you feel that you are playing into offensive stereotypes? <laughs> yeah, no, I feel kind of with bad. With the cheese thing? Cheese is actually not that great for rats. Is that so? That is so. Okay. Um, I don't think we've have ever... some... Oh. What? Huh. What do you mean it's already used? Uh, you know, the game comes with a bunch of different teams of different team values for each race. <laughs> so maybe one of them is actually named the Cheesers. Okay, we're gonna do it with an S. What? Ah. You're gonna have to be more original. Wow. I can't think of anything. I mean, I bet that passes. That's not right. No. Why do you call it cheesy? I, this could not matter less. The cheesy butts. I actually can't imagine a thing that could matter less here. Okay. I forgot what we were talking about. Oh we're, yeah. We're gonna make. We're gonna play the game. Yep. We're gonna teach the viewers how to play the game if they don't already know. We're also gonna show the viewers who do know what a real, resounding, crushing victory looks like. Oh my god. You should enter a name for your home state. Can we not so that we build can move it up on like this? this? Listen, we can do anything. It's the internet. There are no laws or rules here. I am choosing to build it up like this. Aww. That is, you are going to type a very long name. That looks good. A place to play. Okay. Uh, hit no. Do not let your assistants look after team composition. No, no, no. We don't. The want to game. Do that. The game just assumes that we're amateurs. That we've never done this before. So, a Blood Bowl team is made up of up to sixteen players, mm -hmm. eleven on the field at a time. So we want to make sure that we get eleven players here. We get to start with, as you can see in the top right corner, one million money units. Mm -hmm. One million units of cash. Uh, with that, we need to assemble a team. Okay. So, what do we want? Our team rerolls cost 60,000 money each. Ooh. And I think we probably want to have, like, at least one, maybe two if we can swing it. So try to save a little bit of money. Uh, so we got to hire some dudes. Okay. Sure. I think you should definitely hire at least a couple of gutter runners. The game was not kidding when it said gutter runners are amazing. Should I name them? Or should I just name you them? know, you can... 
If you can think of a name quickly. Let's let's not have the team creation part take. Okay, I, I can't long. think of one. Okay. Enough, so, so they have four stats. A player has four stats. Movement allowance, strength, agility, and armor value. We'll explain these in a little more detail in the game. But they pretty much do what it sounds like they do. Movement allowance is how far they can move. Strength is how good they are at punching other players. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of punching in a game of Blood Bowl. Agility is how good they are at um, not getting punched to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. And also... Uh, ball handling stuff. You pick up the ball and throw the ball with agility. Mm -hmm. And armor value is how likely they are to survive getting punched. Higher, <laughs> higher is better for all of these stats. Seven is low relative to armor value. A seven, a seven armor value player is likely to get injured if you let him get punched. Pretty full sneak. Okay, so sure, this this whole um, layout here is different from what I'm used to from yeah. the first blood bowl. So. All I gotta do is just buy? Yep. The gutter runners have uh, the, the dodge skill as well, which is useful. I would say buy at least one more gutter runner. Okay. And then uh, linemen are garbage. <laughs> 7337 mm -hmm. is just. They're just. I mean, they're fine, but no, they're not. They're bad. But they're very cheap. That's the value of the linemen. Uh, the thrower has a couple of skills that make him particularly good at using the ball. Yeah. Using the ball. Listen, mm -hmm. doing stuff with the ball is such a small part of this game that I kind of don't even think about it. I don't think I've ever had a thrower on a skipping team. I, mean, I think sure hands, from what I remember, was pretty good, though. Yeah. Sure hands is one of the reroll skills. So whenever you try to do pretty much anything in this game, you're going to be rolling some six-sided dice. Um, you have to roll dice to pick up the ball. You have to roll dice to throw the ball. You have to roll dice to punch people. Mm -hmm. Um, sure Hands allows you to re-roll the die to pick up the ball if you should fail. Really oh. oh, and he has a he has some kind of warp cannon for an That's arm. That's awesome. Okay, I'm pretty sure that that was not the case in Blood Bowl One. I can see why you would want one of these guys so on your team just, now. So he just like sucks the ball up into it and shoots it. I assume so. Oh, and obviously, yeah. the pass skill allows you to oh, re-roll the pass die if you fail sneak to uh, if you fail to pass. I bought sneak it. Okay, that's three players. We need, we need a lot more. Storm Vermin are punchers. They have a little bit more armor than all the other Skaven players, and also they have the block skill, which is an important skill if you would like to punch people. Punching also, people's pretty important. this game has some frustrating, always wow. online nonsense, and so you just clicked, you just clicked, show me what a Storm Vermin looks like, and it has to contact the wow. server. Goodness. Let's see if let's see if I'm allowed to see what a Storm Vermin looks like. I really. The block skill prevents it. the player from being knocked down after a block on a. That's Bam! The, result. That's the both down symbol. We're gonna talk about blocking. <laughs> Don't worry. When when the punches start flying, we'll explain how they work. But I yeah, I think you ought to have probably stormer. I would go for two storm. Well, listen, it's your team, man. Suck it. It's Don't your team. Good. You can tell from the name. Yeah, I'll get another one. That's good. Good names though. Oh, another sneak. Let's He's the other one's brother. Well, that was, sorry, was that Lamute of Hell? <laughs> Warm in the quick. Lush up. Does Hell exist in the Warhammer Fantasy universe? Uh, I don't know. Okay. But well, you're only allowed to have two Storm Guardians. Um, now, okay. So the Rat Ogre is what we call a big guy. Uh, yeah. He has a little guy riding on his shoulder. Oh, so little. I think that may have done it. That may be it. She, <laughs> she may have to buy him now. Uh, big guys can be a little uh, divisive amongst the community. I personally don't like to have a rat ogre very much on my Skaven teams, but if you want to have a rat ogre, I'm not going to stop you. He has five strength, which puts him mm -hmm. in the top A plus class of man punchers. He has mighty blow, which makes him more likely to injure people when he punches yeah. them. He has frenzy, which means if he tries to punch you and it doesn't exactly work out, he can try again. That's pretty good. Uh, but he doesn't really... He's not really one of the team. He's sort of a horrific monster that you keep in a cage Aww. until the start of the game. Uh, that's what this loner skill represents. He's got a fancy tail. Fancy tail. It's hard for people to dodge away from him because he can grab them with his tail. Fancy tail. Fancy tail. And he's a wild animal, Elise. Wow. So a lot of the big guys, a lot of the biggest guys in the game, have these skills that make them not always functional. Mm. Uh, this dude is sometimes too much of a wild animal to follow orders. Ah. Other big guys, like trolls, may be too stupid to always do what you tell them, mm -hmm. or things like that. There's always a trade-off for bringing a guy who has five strength on yeah. the field. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you want to have a rat ogre? Um, I 
give him a shot. Oh. Does he have eyes? No. You should have one with eyes. Yeah. yeah. Crunch cut. Crunch cut. Yeah, why not? Crunch cut. He's wearing a lot of skulls. That's definitely going to have an effect on the more skulls, the better. All right, we need to hire at least five more players. Oh boy. And you are down to 440k. Ooh. Ah, uh, what do I have? I have one thrower, two gutter runners, two storm burners, and I have So you're going to have to hire at least some linemen. Linemen are garbage, <laughs> basically. They are just bad units. But you know, they're, uh, they're a warm body. They are conscious for some portion of the game, which is a serious <laughs> benefit. I would expect that your, your linemen, they're going to get injured. That's going to happen. And then once their injuries make them no longer good at Blood Bowl, you're going to fire them, and they're going to have a horrible life after the team. But listen, Ooh. that's none of your concern. I'm not even listening. I'm you just are not. No, I'm mostly about... talking. I'm mostly talking to the viewers. <laughs> I'm just getting excited about customizing my rats. So you can see in the to the left of the skills area, there's some pictures with some dice near them. Yep. Uh, that's all cool, interesting stuff that has a real effect on whether players are good or not, and we're not going to talk about what any of it means just yet. Uh, that's that's after the game stuff. We're going to play one game and then we'll talk about that okay. stuff. Lito of Mordheim. That's pretty sweet. That's not a bad name. This one's got a red clock. Police? This one looks like Magellan. I don't mean to rush you. Okay. But we should probably play some Blood Bowl at some point during this video. So here's the question. Are you going to buy two gutter runners? Yeah. Are you going to go up to your maximum wanna... gutter runner allo allotment? Uh, yeah. I think I am. Okay. I want at least one more. Whoa. Jump one better. That's a good name. I don't like it. Oh, you don't like it. Okay. Scry cut? Scry cut's good. Yeah, that's not bad. He only has one head choice. Well, they, um, gutter runners believe very strongly in this hood. Mm. I don't know why. Listen, don't ask me anything about Skaven society. Or Fuffle Sneak. Sure. Who doesn't? <laughs> I think the hood makes them look sneaky. Okay, so. Roblet. Now a question. You have enough players to play a game of Blood Bowl. At this point, we could go to the next screen. You could buy two team rerolls, which yep. are very valuable. Mm -hmm. uh, but if any of your players get injured during the game, you'll be underhanded. Mm. Uh, sorry, you're going to start the game underhanded when you're skating. You'll be undermanned. Yeah. Uh, if you want to buy a 12th player for safety, mm -hmm. that's not a terrible yeah. idea. But it'll cost you a team reroll because you won't have enough money. Yeah. What do you think? I think I'm going to buy one more. You're going to get a lineman? Yeah. Or a. I mean, it could uh, be an extra thrower, I guess. I guess. Get a I'm gonna get a thrower. All right. This thrower has. Some... Yeah, I mean a thrower is strictly better than a line. Absolutely. They are uh, also more expensive. Okay. And that should leave you with exactly enough for one team. Yep. I would like to stress the viewers, that this is uh, not how I would have built the team. Oh. But that's part of what's great about Blood Bowl is that there's so many different strategies that can be pursued. First of all, there's a ton of different teams. This, this computer game does not have all the teams in it yet. It will soon. I strongly recommend you spend the rest of your money on a team as well. Yep. We'll talk about what all this stuff does uh, later. Right now, you just know, team reroll most in one mm -hmm. thing. Alright, look at them. Mm -hmm. They're adorable. Uh, yeah, so hit back. I love them. I love them Hit back some more. Continue to back. And then uh, hit play in a league. We're going to throw this team into a quick league against the AI. Okay. This is a real simple one, so uh, click to the right on those. Here? Yeah, until you get to your team. It's us. Yeah, the join the league. Alright. Solo. Yeah. And just like, um, there's a knockout league, I think, that is really short. Yeah, this is the one. This is the yeah. one I was thinking. Okay, yeah. So this is just a three-game league. Let's just do it. Let's go. Okay. Let's rumble. Let's play some Blood Bowl. Alrighty. It's you have fifteen. A it's basically fifteen minutes into this video, and we've not played any blood. We have to make a really awesome ret team. All right, start the match. Looks like you've been put up against the Kemri first. Nope. So there's a whole bunch of different teams. Um, you and the enemy have the same team value, so you've been given no no inducement money. So we can skip this whole phase of the game, which is fine because it's confusing. We'll come back to it some other game. So there's a whole bunch of different teams, and they all play 
very differently, really. Mm. Um, there are a couple of teams that are similar to other teams, like the elf teams all have some shared stuff. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, the teams play quite differently. And uh, part of what's fascinating about this game, to me, is trying to figure out how to make your particular version of your particular team function against the particular version of the particular team that your enemy is playing. Oh boy. There's a lot of cool stuff going on. <laughs> uh, now there are commentators. I've turned them off for the video. Uh, I've turned, well, I've turned their volume down anyway. Because uh, I was too lazy to set this up. As... <laughs> yes, these are your enemies. The Immortal Oasis. Uh, that guy's, you can tell that guy's the thrower. He's wearing a glove. <laughs> <laughs> what was I saying? I don't even remember. This is really distracting. So the deal is, uh, what you need to know about Kemri is that they are not good at handling the ball. Something about being made entirely of bones and magic and having no muscles or sinew apparently interferes with your dexterity. Mm. So they're not real good with the ball. But they yeah. are much better than your Whoa. team is at throwing punches. So you're going to have to be cautious this game. It's important in every game to identify whether you are the punching team or the other team. Yep. This game, you're the other team. I'm the other team. Uh, also, you're Skaven, so you're almost always going to be the other team. Okay, um... Alright, so you're kicking first. I they chose to receive at the beginning of the first half. I have and not played this Anybody long. who's watched some American football should be able to grasp basically what's going on. Here. Yeah, so if you zoom out a little bit, it does this. Oh yeah, you just click on a player. We can, uh, we can set up our starting position. So the rules for the starting position are, you must have at least three players on the line of scrimmage in this middle portion of the field. Okay, we do. And you can have, at most, two players in each of the side portions of the field. I think the Rat Ogre should be up here. You think the Rat Ogre? I would agree with that assessment. I think the Rat Ogre should be in prime um, punching territory. Now, you don't know what the enemy team is going to look like. They haven't set up yet. They set up after you. So what it's showing you here is just sort of an, an example. No, le left click on a player and then left click. Yeah, the, the Blood Bowl 2 controls oh, okay. are a little different. You can change them back to the Blood Bowl 1 controls, but I elected not to. I feel like it's unsafe to have the Stone Burma there. Yeah, you don't... Well, I, I would, would, I would say I mean just... the Gutter Runners. I'm getting them confused. No, it's a real bad idea to have Gutter Runners yeah. on the line. They're going to get their heads punched off. That's what I was... This other team has, uh, has a whole bunch of big mummy-looking dudes. You can see two of them on the line there. Those guys are going to kill your ass. Yeah. That is their primary job. Okay, I don't really know what else to do. Um, so I would, yeah, make sure that the dudes on the line are all linemen or rat ogres. Yep. Because the rat ogre can fight back and nobody cares what happens to a lineman. Darn it. I might... I don't like this, these controls. I'm not used to this yet. This uh, really well, strange. you can change them if you want. Oh, well, no. Okay. I would put... Now you're fine. Well, we'll learn some things. Listen, the game's gonna go the way the game's gonna go. Okay. I'm fine, whatever. So you have, uh, who's that, who's not in right now? Over there on the left. Who's your 12th man? That's mm -hmm. a lineman that's not in right now. Yeah. Do you want that to be the case? Uh... Having yeah. all of your good players out, um, obviously does increase your chance of getting cool stuff done, but it also means that yeah. the first player who gets injured is probably going to be I'm a good player. I'm just going to go for okay. it. Okay. Confirm setup. You're, you're good. Whatever. Two, three, one, two, Alright, so yeah, you pick a spot on the uh, enemy half of the field, and you can see these arrows indicate the ball's going to scatter out a random number of spaces in a random direction. This little, the little arrows are indicating where the ball could end up if you choose. Well, I don't want it to land on a guy. You also don't want it to land out of bounds. Because if it lands out of bounds, you get a... Uh, yeah, oh, no, I'm running out of time! Okay. You are selected. We're going to apparently uh, oh. see the text of the announcer's lines, even though I turned them off, yeah. which is a little strange. Yeah, so every time there's a kickoff, there'll be a random event. It's just some dice rolling happening behind the scenes. I love this. Look at this. This is the most <laughs> common random event. The weather is nice. And you've kicked the ball clear over the field. Great start. A touchback. And uh, this is, like, the worst thing that could have happened. Because when you, uh, when you kick the ball off the field, the enemy team gets to pick one of their players and just give him the ball. One of the big benefits of playing against Kemri is that they have a hard time picking the ball up. <laughs> you uh, you let them skip the picking the ball up phase of the game. Well. Okay. So what the what the computer player is doing now is setting up for maximum punching. Yeah. I see We're that. gonna 
We're going to talk in depth about the mechanics of punching on your turn, because you're going to want to throw some punches. Uh, for right now, let's just be amazed. Okay. Because check it out. Those guys are skeletons. They are. What the hell is happening here? I love their outfits. This is a very confusing situation. Oh, that's that, a, that right yeah. there? That's a Tomb Guardian. These are the scary dudes. I like how he's like, hi, this little wave. It's me. I'm going now. Oh, here comes the punch. Oh. Tomb Guardian is blitzing your uh, your rat ogre. Oh, come on, bring it. They're coming up the base. Yeah. Okay, he did not do a good job. We'll talk again. We'll talk about this. He pushed him. He pushed him. He just ran over there and shoved it. It's almost like these undead monstrosities don't even have good manners. Mm. On the plus side, you did set yourself up so that very few of your players are in punching range of the enemies. Yep. That's going to be important as the game goes on. We're going to want to try to minimize the violence because we're bad at violence and they're good at it. Yeah. Oh, my poor guys. Okay, so now it's your turn. Okay. How does Blood Bowl work, Elise? Uh, I don't remember. You can punch and stuff. Yes. So each player on your team <laughs> can be issued an order each turn. Yep. Uh, you can tell them to move or to throw a block, which is punch, or to do both of those things, move and throw a punch, but only one player per turn can, can do both. So I think you should start the turn by clicking on your downed guys, your guys who are laying down, and click on them again. Stand him up. If you just double click on a down player, we'll also stand. Alright. So, you can throw a punch against an adjacent player uh, by just clicking on the guy you want to throw the punch and then clicking on the guy I mean, you want to punch. These guys aren't good at punching. Well, you can't, you can't attack with them anyway. You gave them a move. Well, this guy can throw a punch. Uh, uh, things are going to be a little awkward for him, though. Yeah. So, we're going to set this up a little bit. Okay. Okay, so uh, when you try to punch somebody, your strength is compared against their strength. If you have more strength, if you have the same strength they do, you roll one block die. It has a bunch of different faces on it, and mm -hmm. it tells you what happens. If you have more strength than they do, you get to roll two block dice and pick the one you want to use. Mm. Um, if you have less strength than they do, they roll two dice and pick which one happens. So that's not. Good. I'm running out of time. Yeah. This is bad. And then uh, you can increase your guy's effective strength during a punch by, like, let's say, click on that thrower there and move him one space up and to the left. Yeah, that square, yeah that square right there. All right. Now select your rat ogre and aim at the dude right in front of you. You see, uh, you have five strength and he has five strength, but you get two dice. You know why? Because I have a buddy. Because you have a buddy. Every... Friendly player that is adjacent to the enemy player, but not adjacent to any other enemy players, gives you plus one strength for the uh, for the purposes of the punch. Yeah, so throw that punch. Okay. Um, you should uh, move the camera up a little bit so you can see the dice. I don't know which one's which. I don't remember. Click that one. <laughs> so that is a that is a knockdown. The, the yellow pow means knock that guy's ass down. Uh, yeah, punch him there. Sure. Mm -hmm. right. And because your because your rat ogre has frenzy, he follows the guy. That's not good. Okay. He threw a punch. Good job. Yay. Uh, this first game, I mean, I'm expecting you're probably not going to do that great because we're going to be explaining a lot of concepts yeah. while playing. It's okay. Um, so you can see all around the enemy players, these squares on the ground that have numbers on them. Mm -hmm. Those are the enemy players' tackle zones. If you try to move out of a tackle zone, there's a chance the enemy player will punch you in the back of the head as you're leaving. Uh -oh. uh, so it's dangerous. You want to try not to do that if you can avoid it. Okay. So, for example, you could run your thrower here that you have selected around this Tomb Guardian. To where? Here? So, yeah. So you just so you can put pressure on the ball carrier from the other side, but try to avoid... Uh, maybe don't run quite that far. Oh, that's... Uh, you can click on the individual spaces to plot your route. Uh, I'm out of time, okay. so... Have yeah, I'm not gonna be able to get much done in this game, I think. Yeah, you will. Just not these these first couple of turns while we're refreshing concepts are gonna go real well for the Kemri, and then you're gonna have a. I told you, I really don't remember how to play. You're gonna have a wonderful comeback during the second half. That's how this is gonna go. Oh, okay. Hey, listen. One of their guys is down, and none of your guys are down. It looks to me like you're winning. 
<laughs> Something like that. That, uh, that lineman right there is about to get his head punched all the way off. <laughs> it's gonna be like that scene in that... Oh, here comes the blitz. Here comes the blitz. No. He's rolling the dice. Oh, he got a... Oh, he got a both down. Okay, so... The faces on the block die. Uh, you can see those yellow pow faces, like I said, mean that the guy you're hitting gets knocked down. Uh, your players are getting... The yeah. crap kicked out of them, which is how we expected this to go. They're having a little bit of trouble with your rat over here, Well, I would hope so. That's kind of what he's there for. Even our boots get thing. Woods. Woods. What? I was reading that sometimes. The guy said when I was still thing. Uh, it would be good if you focused on things that are happening in the real world, at least. Hey. Blood Bowl is not a joke. Okay. So. Now see, in this situation, you don't get two dice for punching the Tomb Guardian. Yeah. Because your buddy is being interfered with by another enemy player. Oh, they're stunned. Yeah, they're stunned. They can't get back up. This is a bad situation. This is a bad situation. You're gonna... Listen, when you're playing Skaven, it's gonna be like this. A lot. Skaven is a finesse team. I don't think I would uh, do that. Well, why, whatever. Why, why did you do that? Oh. Now that enemy player is providing an assist against you. So what? the strength is evened out. You could deny his assist by moving another one of your dudes over adjacent to him. Probably not the gutter yeah. runner, because the gutter runner will just die if he gets punched. But yeah, like this storm vermin over here, right? You have a guy over here whose whole job is fighting people. Just move him, move him so that he's adjacent to the little guy behind your um, red ogre. In that way, well, no, don't. See, why is that dangerous, Elise? Because I don't want to go through that area. Because you don't want to go through the tackle zone, too, right? Like, you, you have plotted a path that is incredibly crazy. Uh, so the little squares on the bo on the field, yeah. right, the tackle zones, you have to make a check to safely leave a player's tackle zone. And the check is harder if you're doing it into another player's tackle zone. So I can just go here. Yeah, so you can just go right there. That's a totally safe move that doesn't require any craziness. What? what? Whoa! Right click. Cancel the... Just click on the space. Yeah. Left click on the space. And then... It said okay, so I tried to click okay. Left click on the space. Don't click on the okay. That's the thing. The okay is not... It's not really there. It's augmented reality. It's, it's like Google Glass. It's not... It's fictional. It's time to fight. Google Glass is fictional. That's what... If, if anybody takes anything out of this... Would you please move the camera up? Ah. Okay. So that face will knock you both down. The other face is just a push. You could try to re-roll these dice if you want, but yeah, I think just taking the push is right there. Now, unfortunately, uh, this is not a great situation for you. Your rat ogre has frenzy, and so after an unsuccessful attack, he will simply attack again. Yeah. Uh, but he he, pushed good. he survived. That second die, or that second block, was only one die, which is risky because there are faces on the die that knock your own dudes down. I mean, things came out okay. So now these players on the left side of the field, the, uh, you have a thrower and a storm vermin over here, it looks yeah. like. These guys can kind of get around behind the enemy line, right? You start to put pressure on the ball here. So you should probably do that. You should get over there and, like, I forgot there was a ball. harass those dudes. Yeah, that seems fine. Okay. And now, with this storm vermin, you might be able to do a blitz. Ooh. If you can move to a space... You see, you just put your thrower adjacent to a guy, right? Yeah. So you can probably hit that guy with your storm vermin because you have plus one assist, this plus guy? one strength. Yeah, that's not probably the best way. To do it. Oh, I'm running out of time though. Yep. So just uh, yeah, go oh. around behind him. <laughs> yeah, don't panic. There's there is literally, and then click on him. And click on him again. So you've issued a blitz order. You only get to do one blitz per turn. Yep. And that guy Remember gets to this. move and punch. Well, that's not so good. So you don't want to. The skull will knock your guy down. Yeah. But yeah, take this push, push him to the only space that you legally can, and then follow him. Yeah, damn. And now you're adjacent to the ball carrier. Mm -hmm. You're probably just going to get your face punched off, but at the very least, you're making him think. Now, uh, if you want to do one more thing real quick, if you could take that guy and just move him one space backwards. Oh, he swatted at me. He did. So that's what I was talking about. If you try to move out of somebody's tackle zone, they get to take a little swing at you. Mm. Whether or not that swing succeeds is based on your agility. Mm. 
so it's easier for highly agile players like gutter runners to get away from enemies. Oh boy, oh boy. The reason I told you to do that uh, was so that it would be less likely that your dude would get punched because he's just going to get flattened if he gets punched. But I guess the trade-off is that we made it so that the Tomb Guardian could run backwards and punch somebody else. Yeah. You know, it's a complex game. There's a lot of there's a lot of factors to consider. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, this is not going So every one of your players has an armor rating, right? Armor value. Yes. Uh, when you get hit, there's a die roll that's made against your armor value. If the die roll is 2d6... But if the die roll beats your armor value, then your player might be injured. Um, so when you're seeing that little cinematic of a guy getting punched real hard, mm -hmm. that's the game telling you that uh, your armor did not work. They beat your armor value on the die roll, yeah. and so bad things have happened. Mm -hmm. Skaven players have very low armor and get injured all the time. Oh no! That guy punched a rat ogre, and... He looks like he's dead. That guy punched a rat ogre, and he, took, he rolled poorly. His dice were both down or attacker down. So he took the both down. And uh, that's not good for me. You could also blitz. Yeah, I don't think that's the right thing to do here. Okay, just click skip. Or exp I'll, I'll explain this Where's later. Skip? Oh. Um, so, you notice that the turns are ending. Why does the turn end, Elise? What is, what is the thing that determines when the turn stops? Well, either you get... Uh, if you get a block, that's like a... Uh, an attacker down or both down, if your attacker goes down, it ends the turn early. Is that what you're asking? Uh, yeah, almost. The actual answer is, basically whenever you fail a roll, your turn ends. So part of Blood Bowl is a, a game of uh, gambling and, and maths. More than one math. You're going to have to do up to three maths at a time. This is a bad idea to do that anyway. Yeah, I don't think you should do this. I've been talking to you about stuff while you're making moves. Yeah. Um, you've made some moves that are going to complicate things. So here's an idea. Why don't you select one of your gutter runners? Maybe this gutter runner over to, on the right? No, no, uh, sorry. The one, yeah, there. Move him adjacent to this skeleton that's near. Yeah. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna blitz this guy. So you're gonna set this gutter runner up to provide an assist. And then your thrower there with the white circle around him, uh, there can blitz this skeleton. Okay. And then the thrower will be adjacent to the ball carrier, and once again, we're just trying to put pressure on their ball carrier for it. Okay. So you're looking for... Yep, that'll do. Defender stumbles. That's fine. Uh, push him backward. Yeah. And then follow him. Alright, let's go. Oh! Wow. He gave it to him. Oh, that's, yeah. a, that's a proper injury. Nicely nice. done. You've badly hurt him. He is out of the game. Except maybe not, because he's a skeleton. Oh, what's going on? Okay. Okay, no, he's fine. He's out. Uh, a lot of the undead units have a chance to shake off any injury. It looks like that did not happen. What else should I do? So now that ball carrier, they're going to have to figure out a way of getting you off of him. Probably what that's going to mean is your dude is going to get blitzed, and his head's going to get punched in. Uh, that's fine. You know, that's how things go. Yeah. Uh, your rat ogre failed to get up yeah. because of his, I'm a big guy and I don't do what I'm told, right? This thing. Yeah, wild animal. An angry bear. He's too, he's too mad to even get up. He's just sitting there being angry. Yep. So you have two gutter runners left. You see these, uh, the characters with the white circles haven't had orders issued to them. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually the uh, the guy who you just stood up. It's his turn right now. He's, uh, you started giving him a move order. Get up is part of a move order. So you could have this guy dodge away in an attempt to not get him punched. However... As it is right now, he's probably preventing that Tomb Guardian from moving. Yeah? Yeah, if you, well, the Tomb Guardian's certainly not going to dodge away from you. He has one agility. So, if you move your guy away, that frees the Tomb Guardian to come over here and punch one of your other dudes. Mm -hmm. It's a complex game, so there's a lot of factors. Well, okay, we're just going to leave him there. We're just going to leave him there? Yeah. What do you want to do with these gutter runners? I want to attack people. Well, you can't. You only get to do one blitz per turn. You used it already. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I should come over here. I would say just kind of fall back a little bit and be ready in case they get free of your uh, of your very clever trap here. Just be ready to pounce on them. Gutter runners are fast. They're not very good punchers with They're two prepared strength. Prepared for the, the ball carry. Yeah. But what they can do is just harass this dude and make his life miserable. 
Camry are slow, mm -hmm. which is going to make it hard for them to get uh, yeah, look at that. get to the end zone. Whoa. Oh, careful. So you can't always see it. The game hides the grid lines most of the time. But, uh, obviously, the field is a grid. Mm -hmm. uh, your movement allowance is the number of spaces on the grid that you're allowed to move per turn. And uh, each half of the field, I believe, is 13 squares long. And you can see a lot of these Kemri players have, like, five moves. So it takes them a long time to get across the field. Yeah. That dude is in your half, but it's probably going to take him like two full turns of moving and then a little bit to get to the end zone. Wow. So you can potentially keep him bogged down so much that they don't get to the end zone before the half ends. Mm -hmm. You can see on the uh, upper left and upper right of the screen the turn counters, mm -hmm. indicating that there are eight turns per half. Uh, the AI is playing its fourth turn right now. I love watching these guys walk. And because oh, it, because the AI chose to receive, their turn is their turns are before yours. So it's their fourth turn, then your fourth turn, then their fifth, then your fifth. Mm. So there's still a lot of time. There's a lot of time for things to go wrong yet. But it looks like they couldn't find a way to get the ball carrier clear of you, and they elected mm. to just end the turn with their ball carrier adjacent to one of your dudes. This is bad for them. So yeah, if you take that guy and you move him adjacent to the ball carrier, see like just on the corner mm -hmm. there? Here. Yeah, either one of those is good. Yeah, that's cool. So we're setting up an assist. Yep. And then your other thrower is in a position to just get a two-die block against that ball carrier right now. This guy. Yeah. Right? Yep. Let's get him. Get him. Don't let them have the ball. Yep. Okay, so you could use your team reroll right now to re to try Let's that roll again. Risk it. That's what the be the beauty of the Aww. team reroll. Aww. Okay. Well, I'll push him back. Now, whether you want to follow up or not is dependent on whether you want to be adjacent to that Tomb Guardian or not. <laughs> now, Ichi's not too fair enough. I think that's perfectly sensible. Okay, um... You should probably stand him up, and his job is just going to be to distract those Tomb Guardians. So you stay right there and get, get punched in the head. Sorry, buddy. Um, wild animal again. So now... Do you see? Do you see a way that you can hit the ball carrier again? Because uh, there is one. This is what I love about Blood Bowl. Every turn is like a little puzzle. This guy? No. Here he is. I have no idea. Okay. I'm just gonna say. With your thrower, you see your uh, your gutter runner there that's next to that oh, thrower. Oh yeah, that's my guy. <laughs> see the gutter runner that's next to the thrower? Yeah. He has less strength than that skeleton. But he's getting two assists right now, right? Mm. If you were to throw that punch, you would yeah. get a two-die block. No, no, the, the skeleton is... Yeah. So if you punch this guy down with your gutter runner, then the other rat that's next to the gutter runner could go over and blitz the ball carrier. Okay. Right? Yeah. So you see the idea? A lot, of, a lot of the game is about sort of unwinding the enemy's tackle zones each turn. Oh. And see, this is why team rerolls are valuable. Uh. Uh, you will get your team reroll back at the beginning of the new half. Uh, but every yeah. once in a while, you're just going to roll them double skulls. Yes. And if I know anything about math, math indicates roughly 1 in 36 times you're going to pull them double skulls. Oh, he's knocked out. That's bad. That's one of the things that can happen uh, if you get an armor break. He is off the field, out of the game. At the beginning of each new drive, there'll be a chance for him to wake back up, but mm -hmm. honestly, he might be unconscious for the rest of the game. Oh, okay. I don't know what they're doing. What? No. I think some of his team hasn't realized that they're no longer in a scoring position. Yeah. <laughs> Those guys are still going toward the end zone. Ooh. Okay, here come the Tomb Guardians. These two Tomb Guardians who are close to you. Oh, I guess he used his Blitz already, though, in a really strange way. I'm going to be honest with you, the AI is not great at the game. Uh, the purpose of this game was not to be a high-class competition game. This mm -hmm. is a this is an Elise's remembering the game sort of game. Yep. So once again, you can set up a hit on this ball carrier. We really need to get rid of that skeleton that's occupying all your dudes there. Uh, I would have, yeah, I would have your your down players stand up first. There are fancier moves here, but um, I got you. But if you're, many, if, many guys. if you're first starting out, it's it's perfectly reasonable to have your down players just stand up and move it. 
So, you got a couple of assists here. Let's hit him. Hit him. Uh-oh. Is this one? Oh, that is, down. both of you go down. That's oh, not great. I don't want that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's fine. It's unfortunate. Uh, because there's not really a good way to get one of your players adjacent to one of their players. Oh, well, actually, yeah, you can just do the blitz with this guy, right? Yeah. Okay. So where do you where do you want to throw the punch from? Click on the space where you want to throw the punch from. Move your guy manually. Here. Don't let the game... <laughs> I, I don't think there's any way you're getting over there. That's a long series of difficult dodges. Here. Yeah, I think this is... You gotta be a little bit careful. If you let the game determine stuff, it will sometimes move you in funny ways. So how so do I blitz click on Click on the space, then click on the enemy. Okay. Come on. Oh, <laughs> really? Oh, man. Okay, so Blood Bowl is a game that has a significant component yeah. of randomness. Sometimes you are going to make the plays that are statistically sensible, and you are going to be horribly punished for it. It's just part of the magic of Blood Bowl. And I only... I Honestly, I'm not being sarcastic. Like I think that it creates a lot of interesting situations. Mm -hmm. um, Blood Bowl is a lot like... You mentioned that it is sort of in the Warhammer Fantasy universe, mm -hmm. kind of. Um, it's non-canonically in the Warhammer Fantasy universe. Um, and it's like Warhammer in that you make such a large number of dice rolls. You can see the dice log at the bottom of the screen, so you can watch them all roll by. Um, ooh. He rolled, he took a single die block, rolled skull against you, and had you use one of his team to roll something. Nice. Um, you roll such a large number of dice over the course of a game that it's actually pretty unlikely that you will have a game where you did everything right and you just got completely screwed by the dice rolls. Mm. Over the course of the 300 die rolls that occur during a game, you will hew fairly close to the statistical average a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, we ran a Blood Bowl League, a couple seasons of a Blood Bowl League, yes, we and we uh, we used a program to parse all the dice rolls, and it was the case. Pretty much everybody pretty much rolled the average over the course of their games, Yeah. Uh, even though there were definitely some situations that caused players to go, oh my god, this game, fuck this game, Yeah. I definitely would have won if not for those stupid dice. You know, there are some feel-bad moments in games with randomness, but I don't think that randomness is necessarily... Uh, bad. Okay. So now you're in a bit of a position. Things yeah. have gone awry. Yeah. Uh, you got a couple of bad rolls in a row, and then the enemy smartened up and threw some good punches. So how are you going to solve this problem? I have this? no idea. Yeah, it's a bit of a... This is a, yeah. a quandary. It's a bit of a conundrum. I'm going to have to stand them up. There's no use in them lying down, I guess. Yeah. Now, you could, instead of just standing everybody up, which consumes their... Blitz. You could have you could have had some of them stand up and dodge away from the people they're next to, and yeah. there's some there's some merit in, in doing that in uh, certain cases. Mm. Uh, so how are you? What are you going to do? The opponent has two turns left. I actually don't think he can score. Yeah, his players are slow enough that I don't think he can score. I think basically, my plan at this point is just to slow him down. Okay, you probably want to try to minimize casualties while doing that. Yeah. Um, so players who can safely dodge away from the enemies that are next to them should. Uh, remember, he can only do one blitz per turn. Yeah. So only one of your guys who doesn't start his turn adjacent to enemies will get punched. How bad would it be to... That's... Ooh. Yeah, pretty unlikely. You can see, the game gives you the percentages. I wish it would just show you the dice roll numbers, and it, I think it's going to when they release the Legendary Edition later this summer. Do it! But that's a pretty good dot. That's very likely to work out. And remember, if you mouse over your gutter runner's picture over here, he has the dodge skill down the, yeah, there. Which allows you to, he didn't actually mouse over long enough there, to read I'm trying to, I'm also trying to, like, take yeah. my turn. He has the dodge skill, which lets him re-roll failed dodge spots. That'll just be a one-on-one -on -one punch. You could throw yeah. that punch, but I would do it at the end of your turn, because your turn will end if it fails. Yeah. Part of the part of the thing that's cool about Blood Bowl is trying to figure out the right order of your moves. Yeah. It's not wrong to do risky stuff. You just want to try to do it later. So that guy doesn't really need to move. Yeah, but know. this there's a gutter runner right there who will get punched when your turn starts, or when the opponent's turn starts if you leave him there, right there. 
You you Let's moused start. over no, you moused over every space oh. adjacent to it without mousing over it. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. The odds of a gutter runner failing a single dodge are quite low. Okay. Okay, so let's let's right over. Okay. You wanna, you wanna give it to him? Yeah. Are we gonna select the rat ogre? Select, you gotta click on that. Oh go. goodness. What? Oh, 83%? Yeah, so his wild animal trait oh. makes him uh, only <sighs> only follow orders half the time, unless those, those orders involve hitting people. He's more likely to follow an order that involves a punch. <laughs> but he failed it. Yeah, so this is perfectly reasonable. You're throwing your, uh, throwing your punches. Um, if you injure an enemy player by punching him, ooh, as you may have done here, like that. How bad is it? It's smacked by a rat. Just to start. No uh, if you injure an enemy player, your guy who threw the punch will get some XP. And there's some persistent team development stuff in here too that's really cool uh, that we'll talk about after the game. But one of the reasons that it's good to just throw punches like this is sometimes you can get some, uh, you get a level on your player. Nice. Yeah, the rat revenge. Take that. Okay, you guys are doing it. Yep. So a stunned player can't get up on his next turn. He has to wait one more turn. Yeah. Uh, right. There's a there's a range of things that can happen to a player if his armor doesn't save him from a punch, which is colloquially uh, known as an armor break. Mm -hmm. uh, he can get stunned. He can be KO'd, like one of your players was. He can be seriously injured. He can even die. Players can just get punched so hard they die. That sucks. And if you're playing a Skaven team, you will see that happen to your players a lot. <laughs> Over the course of a season, I would expect mm. you're probably going to see like two to three deaths on a Skaven team. It's the curse of that seven armor value, man. Seven is the unluckiest number. So there's the ball carrier. He's advanced somewhat. Yeah. He's and what the AI is doing now is called caging. He's placing a bunch of his players nearby and around his ball carrier to make it difficult for you to get to the guy. This would be a real good strategy if he had done it like five turns ago. <laughs> um, now it doesn't matter, because that skeleton actually just doesn't have enough move. Oh, he threw it. He went for a one-die block and failed it. We rolled to a push. Just trying to get some vengeance on your rat ogre. Okay, so this is your turn seven. Uh, their turn eight cannot end with a score, so hold on, hold on. Before you just stand people up, you could stand that guy up and move him one space to provide an assist on this skeleton, right? Yeah. Yeah, right there. So sometimes it's not just stand everybody up. Sometimes it's stand stand a guy up and move him, too. Just stop clicking on the guy. Just click on the space you're looking at. I do not like... Something's weird about all this. It's it is slightly... <laughs> I, th I think it is slightly... Um, Unintuitive to have left click be all of the buttons. Yeah. I think it's kind of a strange choice. But okay. Uh, yeah, don't, don't take the attacker down. I would not follow up if I were. Yeah, stay, see. stay away from the tomb guardian. Mm -hmm. If that tomb guardian wants to wants to punch you, you make him use his blitz. Yeah. So stand that guy up. Maybe I should have him like no, you should stand him. Okay. <laughs> and I'll explain why. First of all, moving to that space you were trying to have him move to would have been a dodge into an enemy tackle zone. It's tricky. Uh, also, standing where he is, he's denying the assist of that skeleton that's standing adjacent to your rat ogre, right? And then you stand this guy up so he provides a positive assist for you, and now you have a two-die block. Oh, the wild you animal are rolls. are useless! So, when you, uh, you can see down at the bottom, wild animal 2+. You only fail Wild Animal on a 1 if the order involves punching someone. The Rat Ogre wants to punch people, um, but your Rat Ogre has rolled terribly. Yeah, what am I supposed to do? Uh, your Gutter Runners probably cannot yeah. do anything really productive here. Um, with their 2 strength, they're really bad at throwing punches, and the only players they can easily get to are Tomb Guardians, who have 5 strength. Uh, but you do have a Blitz! That you should probably use. So yeah, like having the storm vermin come down and punch that guy adjacent to your thrower. That seems perfectly reasonable. Oh, oh, oh. Draw your path manually. Right click? Yeah. You want to stand next to your thrower, right? So that you're not next to the tomb guardian while throwing the punch. And that way you get an assist and they don't, you get your two dice. Ninety percent of Blood Bowl is how do I get my two dice? Yeah. Ah. Not even good. 
And then, again, probably don't follow so that you don't get... Uh... Now, because this guy blitzed, he can move. He can use the rest of his move after throwing the punch. I don't think you really want to in this case. I don't think it accomplishes think anything. Fine, right? But it's something to remember for the future. So you've probably done everything of value you can do this turn. I'd like to move this guy up. Okay, so that he can potentially provide some support on yeah. your on your eighth turn. Yeah, that's perfectly sensible. Over here. Run, little girl, run. Honestly, Elise, I think you're yeah. gonna win this game. I think you are oh. in position to win. That's kind of sad. Yeah, Kemri are not a great <laughs> team. They're not. They're not as bad as the AI is making them look. But um, they're very prone to this kind of like. See, what you've done here is you've assembled sort of a lot of tackle zones around their ball carrier. Yeah. They don't dodge well. Mm -hmm. They don't run very fast. Mm -hmm. And they can only blitz once per turn, just like everybody else. So, um, they're very prone to this sort of, like, just build a cage around them and let them run themselves out of time. Oh, nice. no! He took the both down. Nice. But your player has block, which makes the both down face not knock him down. That is what makes Storm Vermin special. Most teams have a player like that, a guy who starts, the, who starts with block. And what do I even do now? Say that, uh, um, now you just like throw punches. Try find any punch that will probably work and throw it. Just try to injure his players before the second I half. I kind of want to try it. Yeah, if you could take down a, a, a tomb guardian, that would be fantastic for you. Don't wild animal. Don't wild animal. He didn't. Uh, you probably could have thought this through a little bit more, because now the second block is going to be a one die block. Because now he's going to have an assist from that skeleton. Right? Mm -hmm. So it would have been better to move somebody. Okay, that's a that's a down. Take it, get him. Oh, and rat ogres have the mighty blow skill, which makes them slightly more likely to injure enemies that they hit. Didn't work out for you there. Uh, you don't really have a lot of other good punches, huh? Oh, you could assemble a good punch with that guy. This guy? I thought I would bring this guy along. But if you bring the, you could move enough players adjacent to that northern. The northern of the two skeletons, and just, you know, just like put a bunch of guys adjacent to him. Yeah, like right there. You can just keep stacking up dudes until it's a two-die block. You, know, you probably have to use these guys on the left. Yeah, go around the enemy players. Yeah, like that. See, you're getting it. You're good at this. Is that a? That should be two, right? You have two assists. He has one. Yeah, get him. Smacking. Okay, good stuff. This is his, uh, throw raw is the name of that guy's position. <laughs> That's cute. It doesn't really matter what you do. Your opponent doesn't have another turn. The half is over when you end your turn, so. Okay, so you can get one more punch out by doing a blitz. Um, so that the guy adjacent to the guy who just threw the punch is now vulnerable, right? If somebody went over there and hit him. Yeah, uh... It's probably gotta be one of these players on the left, though, because of the tackle zones. You could do like a... Here, here... Well, no. you're moving through a tackle zone there. So you want to go around oh, yeah. it, right? Here, here, here. And then to the right one more. Yeah. You know, that's a... Okay. Don't do that. Here? Here, right click. Yeah. You, uh, you clicked on a downed guy indicating that you would like to stomp oh, no, on no, them. Oh, no, 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 I don't, do not want to do that. Don't stomp on people just yet. We'll talk. That's some advanced tactic stuff. We'll talk about that later. Just click on the. Yeah, click there. You gotta stop. Your problem is you keep clicking on your player. Yeah. Um, up and to the right. Yeah. Yeah, and then to the right. Right, and then punch that guy. Okay. Whoa. Lots of lightning happening. All right, get him. The game's just trying to hype you up for what is clearly going to be the best punch of the game. Defender down, get him. That guy's a blitz rod. Blitz rod. Uh, if you couldn't tell, Blood Bowl does not take itself entirely seriously. Yeah, blitz rod. Which we really appreciate. Uh, I, your players can't do anything else of value. You <laughs> threw all your legal punches. Yeah. Um, you would probably not be doing so well against the player. Oh, the AI no. is really pretty soft, unfortunately. Uh, so they have <laughs> they have one injured player. You have a knocked out player who did not get up all the time. But, you brought that 12th player to me. Yep. So you're going to be able to field 11 dudes here, and your opponent's probably only going to be able to put out 10. Look at these guys talking smack. 
Jeez. Yeah, so you're setting up 11 to 10 now. The player they're missing is not a great player, but this uh, every advantage is an advantage. So they are kicking, which means mm -hmm. they had to set up first. So what you're seeing now is their actual setup. Okay. So There's some just blood over here. here. Yeah. Yeah, the field gets dirty over the course of the game. So you have your uh, you have your throwers there in the backfield, ready to shag the kickoff wherever it might land. If I were you, I might spread those guys out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I would probably keep them in the middle zone, but just barely. Okay. You you're, not, you're, not, no. you're not into that? Oh, sorry. Okay, how about that? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> and then, uh... Since you know, you know where their guys are set up now, and you get to go first this half, you probably want to set up guys on the line to punch all of their guys. Be ready to throw all those punches, right? Line them up there. Uh, I really don't want the gutter runners. Like, yeah, perfectly, line, perfectly reasonable. See, so yeah, I think the rat ogre can probably handle the guy that's in front of him. He doesn't need any help. Okay. This guy over. This guy over. That seems okay to me. I don't like the way you say that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to help you, but not play the game for you. Whatever, so I'm gonna. It's go a for delicate, it. it's a delicate balance. It's just a game. Yeah, wow, it's just a game. You know. Yes. The Immortal Oasis gets an extra what? team reroll this half. What a bummer. So you have your one, and I think they have like three or four now? Uh, they have three. Yeah. And it's kickoff events, you know? So do I just grab it? Well, if you go for the ball, you might fail that roll, right? Yeah. So um, should punch first? Yeah, so try to... I, I would say, in general, this is not a long-term life strategy, but in general, do your most likely to succeed actions first. Smacking Two die blocks are pretty likely to at least not kill you. Now, you have already seen double skulls. You know it can happen. But, oh no. Oh. Okay, so you can try the team reroll. I'm doing it. Okay, but there's a chance it won't work because your guy's a loner. He's not a team player. So, uh, oh. yep. Maybe you'll kill him. Maybe. We're both going down. Oh no, your rat ogre's ah. injured. Okay, he's badly hurt. No long-term effect, but he's out for the rest of the game. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I should have picked the ball up first. In the Blood Bowl lore, as, so much as there is Blood Bowl lore, uh, there is a god who controls the randomness of events called Nuffle. And if you think about Maybe. that for three seconds, you'll figure <laughs> out why. Uh, and so we often say that Nuffle has cursed us, mm -hmm. or that Nuffle has chosen us, uh, you know, when things are going poorly or well. It definitely seems like Nuffle has picked a team that he would like to win. Maybe we should say a prayer to Nuffle. Maybe nah, screw go. that. Screw that guy. Yeah, screw you, Nuffle. I don't care anymore. I'm not going to kowtow to a deity of randomness. Kowtow? That's basically, yeah. Oh no, kowtow? That's, that is a real word <laughs> that people actually use and it has meaning. I love the, the Tomb Gardens, how when they get into the square they're going to, they, they He's just going stumble. for it. He's just going for what? it. What? He does not have the agility to pick that ball. Oh, oh he's using a reroll. Oh. He did not get it on the reroll. Oh, good. Shoot. <laughs> they have very poor agility. Woo. Okay, so now you're going to have to solve the puzzle, Elise. Yeah. This is the puzzle you have been given. What will you do? I like where your head's so, at. So, like, knock this guy down, get this guy over to grab the ball, or... If I may improve your plan end. very slightly. Yeah. Throw the punch with the guy to the right of that. This guy. Yeah. So you're getting one negative assist from that Tomb Guardian, but two positive assists from your buddies. If this blocks work, block works out, you can have your guy follow up, and then you're not adjacent to the Tomb Guardian anymore. Mm. It makes it harder for him to punch you next turn. Alright, push is fine. Except push. Just don't push him next to your dudes. Yeah. Then check that out. Nice. By doing a follow up, you can get out of somebody's tackle zone without having to make that uh, dodge. So yeah, now you can put put a couple of rats' heads together and get this skeleton down. So I'm gonna try moving him. I would suggest that you try to have guys adjacent to the ball. You saw when he failed to pick it up, it scatters into a random adjacent square. It can fall into the hands of another player. Whoa, hold on. 
You probably want him to still be providing an assist on that block, though, right? Yep. So he's gonna go here. Yeah, that's that's a perfectly reasonable spot. Also, I'm next to that would be fine. So I would blitz from the from the spot that's adjacent to both the enemy and the ball there. Yeah, like there. So here and then here. Yeah, give it to him. Yeah. That punch. That dude's just a skeleton. He doesn't even have a goofy name. Oh. Okay, that's it's not that bad. So yeah, push him away from the ball, probably. I'm gonna follow. Okay. That's perfectly sensible. And now. Um, one of your other gunner runners, who's not adjacent to any enemies at the moment. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Right click. Right click to unselect it. <laughs> Left click to do stuff. Uh, right click to unselect it. Yeah, could just run over and probably pick it up. Four agility gives you a pretty good chance of picking it up. Yeah. But. Too late. Okay. Like, you should talk faster. <laughs> I was going to say, but it's risky and you don't have any team rerolls, so you might want to do some other likely stuff first. Ooh, right That's click. That's not what I meant to right do. Right click. You got to unselect the player before you go. Oh, there you yeah, go. There okay. you go. Um, what do we got going so on here? That looks real bad for you. Yeah. I would suggest that you move another player over near your gutter runner to protect him. Cage up like you saw the enemy doing. What do we got? Oh. You got some throwers back here who can make it. Yeah, just, um, yeah, like right there. You, uh, you right clicked. Ah. <laughs> I can't right click when I need to. I know, See, I know. I feel like it should be right click. And it was it was right click in the first game. And again, we can change it to the Blood Bowl 1 control scheme if you want. I'm going to learn to play it like this, at least for this game. Okay. So now, you've provided two assists on that skeleton. That's enough for that gutter runner to give him a two-die punch. Give it to him. Gutter runners don't usually get their experience from punching people, but you know, there's no reason it can't work. So do you want to follow here? Or you want to keep your gutter runner safe. Yeah, I'm gonna okay. Even though yeah. I'm following him would make it more likely that you're gonna successfully punch him next turn. So yeah, you could just fall back to here, and this is this is a sensible cage. Making a for reals cage with weak guys. Basically. Yeah, you are unfortunately uh, leaving your opponents a lot of latitude as far as how they can move. Do you want to try to dodge those rats away from? Well, maybe. I think you're slightly more likely to survive the dodge than you are to survive the punch. Do it. But oh. Do it. I was going to say, but think about where you actually want to move to, because I'm not sure that that was it. If you want to <laughs> click on that guy, he's yeah, it's still his turn. Yeah, he's moving. Do you maybe want to move him to somewhere where he's at least helping to run interference for the cage? I don't think you need to... He's going into the cage. Just okay. stop. Just stop. You don't really need to fill in all the spots of the cage. But yeah, something like that, where he, that guy is doing a great job of providing tackle zones that prevent people from even getting close to it. I don't have time to make the right decision. It's just something to do. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, they're trying to set up a uh, a good blitz. They're probably not going to be able to hit your gutter runner, but their plan is to get a good blitz on the corner of the cage mm -hmm. and then end the turn with a guy adjacent to your ball carrier so that it's hard for you to do stuff. Yeah, but I can dodge. Yeah, the thing that they really aren't counting on here is that you have four agility and dodge, so you'll probably be able to get away. Oh, oh my, my God. goodness. <laughs> We're thinking the same thing. That, I love that land. Ooh. That dude could step it up a little bit. <laughs> I'm just saying, you're a professional Ooh. athlete. Maybe like a little bit of cardio. <laughs> it's me. All of them have to move. Really. <laughs> just creep every dude around the field as slowly as possible. Okay, here comes that corner blitz. He did this in kind of a. He did this in kind of an interesting way. Okay, he's rolled double push. Not exactly what he was hoping for. That's actually pretty good for you. That result. Mm -hmm. Now he's throwing punches off field. He's rolling a lot of arrows. Yeah. That's not what you want to see. Okay, so now you have to punch an opening Ooh. for your gutter runner. This yeah. is actually pretty easy. He uh, he screwed up. So where, how are you? How do you think you should do this? Maybe. Mm -hmm. This guy could go here. For what reason? I want him to have an assist. But is your gut your gutter runner's already providing an assist, isn't he? No. Yes. Well, on this guy. He, yes, he's adjacent oh, to exactly what I was saying. Yeah, because you got to get rid of both of those guys, right, to open up a path for your ball carrier to run. Yeah. 
Yeah. So you may as well just get rid of this guy first. Should I? Well, no, I should hold it. Yeah. Alright. I'm gonna start with this. Oh. All you need is a push, but hey, a knockdown's very welcome. So now you have to decide, do you want to follow up to open up a hole, or do you want to stay to provide an assist against that other guy? I want to stay. Okay. I think that's probably right. That's what, that's what I would have done. Okay. So now, this dude who just threw a punch is only adjacent to one enemy, so he's providing a, an assist against that guy. Yeah. So... Let's try. Go, go, go. Okay, not bad. Now I'm going to recommend you follow up here. Because now, you've created a nice hole for your ball carrier to run into. Sorry. Yeah, well, so you can take the dodge. The dodge is pretty likely to work out, just running through that one tackle zone. Yeah. It'll get you way downfield. But you don't have a team reroll. So, so like yeah, you could just take this slightly longer path. It'll result in you getting a little bit less uh, downfield. But it will... Uh, How far can you go? Well, I mean, you can see the white rectangle drawn on the field. Um, you probably want to run further away from the two guardians than that. Then right click to cancel it. Well, you don't need to not go forward. <laughs> go go forward, but go closer to the sideline, basically. Yeah, stop clicking on the player. <laughs> you're making you're making it far more difficult on yourself. Like this? Yeah. Or maybe even yeah, that's fine. Whatever, I'm sitting clicking. Go, little guy, go! Look at him go! And so now bad. you have some dudes over here who were part of the cage who cannot keep up with your gutter runner, right? Like, okay, because otherwise you were going to try to throw a pass. Oh, jeez. So you have some dudes here who used to be guarding for your gutter runner who cannot run to keep up with him because he's too fast. But who can... Well, I guess that guy's also a gutter runner. He can keep up. Um, so try to, try to provide some tackle zones that will confound pursuers. Right, so just put some tackle zones between those two guardians and your. You gotta stop clicking on your players after you select. Run it. Yeah, like if you move forward a couple. Yeah. There. No, probably not there. Right click to clear the move. You gotta think about where your guys' tackle zones are going to be. You wanna make it You're hard for. Time. Yeah, it would help a lot if you'd stop clicking on your players. Yeah, like right. Do it. Oh, why did it do that? Because you clicked there. Just yeah. don't click on the player. Click where you want him to go. Let's go. Okay. There you go. So now you're providing some some tackle zones that en enemy players are going to have to move around to get to safety, right? Because they're not going to be able to dodge. Quickly. Quickly throw this. Some good speed blood bowl. <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad turn. You're likely to score. And it's very unlikely that the enemy team will be able to score in, in, during the remainder of the half because yeah. they move too slow. <laughs> All right, you basically uh, okay. He can just barely get over to you. What? He had to make a dodge, which is pretty unlikely. Well, not un unlikely, but not likely. Okay, and then he had to make another roll. Basically, he did everything in his power. He had to roll pretty specific results for it to work. It didn't work. Oh, my poor little guy. No, it was a push. These uh, these tomb guardians are actually not rolling very well. So. Okay. Right, let's try to make life difficult for you. I think you're gonna be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just like dodge out of this. Yeah. There's a space, there are spaces adjacent to you that don't have tackle zones in them, so all you have to do is make a single dodge. Mm. Um, it's not guaranteed to work. Yeah, of course. But the dodge you have to make is a 2 plus, no. and you have an automatic reroll from that dodge skill. So all you have to do is not roll 1 and then 1 again. There's a 35 out of 36% chance that you will succeed on this dodge. I do not think you should do anything else on your turn. Get the point. Every other action you take is a chance of something going wrong and ending your turn prematurely, right? Yeah. You can just go to the end zone. You're fast as hell. All you gotta do is not roll straight pass. Oh. Okay. You started your roll. You actually did. You rolled a one, but then yeah. on the reroll, oh. rolled a six. Oh, jeez. Okay. I think you probably just won the game. Oh, a couple sneak. Good 
job. Look Mar at him. Morph Alpha Sneak is doing it, man. Yeah. He's a hero. Oh, look, we get trailers. He can hit escape time. <laughs> it's, it's not a great use of anybody's time. Okay. Uh, you guys still injured? Ah, but your other dude wakes up. Nice. What still, you still get to field 11 players. You're killing it, Elise. Yeah. You're killing it, and none I'm of your players have died. Okay. Alright, so set up for defense. Uh, remember, this time you're setting up first, so you don't actually know what his players are set up like. I would just put three linemen on the line. They're gonna get totally wrecked. This is their lot in life, you know? Another lineman. Um, the dude in the middle of your back line is a lineman. You swapped, you swapped his place with the stuff. So what's your what's your plan here, Elise? Tell walk us through oh, your setup. I'm trying to get you know the tougher guys up closer, uh, gutter runners back a little bit. Well, they're not getting the the kick off, but um, I don't want them to be easily punched. Yeah, easily yeah. punched. So I'm going back a little bit. You're uh you have three players in that right side, so. Okay. Um. So. Let me come back a little bit. So I'm just trying to get the. Squish your guys back. These guys... You know what? I would advise... Ooh, don't put more guys on the line. No? No, 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 no. no. Okay, well, what, would you, what would you advise them? I would advise you move the gutter runners up a little bit. I like the basic idea, but you're, you put them so far back that they're going to have trouble contributing to the play. How, how far up? I would even, like, one more space. Yeah, like up there. Gutter runners are fast, so they can get to the ball if it gets loose or something, but you need them to be... What do you think? I think you didn't actually move the last gutter runner. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> I'm having some real problems with the controls in this game. Okay, so how's he gonna set up? Ah. Uh... Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say that's not a legal setup. All right. So pick a space. Try to shoot. Try not to. If you kick it in the exact center of their half, it can't be a touchback. I believe. Is that the center? No. This is the center. One more back. And then one more. One. Two. Yeah, right there. That's the dead center. Alright, I'm just doing that then. Actually, it can still be a, a touchback. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's Nuffle fine. Nuffle wants him to win. That's fine. He made his choice. You know what Nuffle is, Elise? An a hole. He's a loser. Loser! He made his bets, and he's gonna lose. Alright, so they really. They don't need to do this. That Tomb Guardian could handle that line. I don't know yeah. what he. I don't know what the AI is doing. Right what, what, why are they afraid of him? They're setting up maximum assists. So if you throw a block, and after all of the assists and everything, uh, your player has more than twice the enemy player's strength. You get to throw three dice and pick the result you want. Mm -hmm. So they have set up a three die block here. That is not necessary. This poor guy. And they still have three team rerolls. They could just throw the punch. It would be fine. I don't know what. Please. They're cowards, at least. I'm They're afraid of. Swoop by and pick this up. You actually might. You actually might be able to do it. Oh no! Let's see if he can get it. Remember, he only has two agility. Oh, oh he but has he, has sure hands. he has sure hands. He got to re-roll. He failed the pickup roll. He's a throw raw. He's a throw raw. That's what they do. The funny thing is, the throw raws don't actually have any skills that help them pass. But they can pick the ball. But, the, <laughs> but they're the only people who can pick the ball up reasonably. <laughs> so. Uh, I think, actually, well, we'll talk about leveling up, but I think they have access to passing skills on leveling up easier, uh, mm. easier than a lot of players. Alright, so that block was push-push. Mm. Here it comes. Here comes the stompinating. Alright. Ow, ow. So after this, after this turn, they're going to have four more turns. Your yeah. job is to keep them from getting a touchdown in four turns. That actually shouldn't be that difficult. And in fact, they've made a tremendous tactical error. Do you see it? Select one of your players. See, so you can see their tackles. Do you see a uh, you see a good way to get to that ball carrier? This way. Well, if you do that, you're gonna have to dodge through three tackles, right? This way. That is a hell of a long. Way. I don't know. <laughs> the answer is that skeleton there. 
this is the only source of tackle zones in that ah. column right next to the sideline, right? So if you could figure out a way to blitz him down, you would open up a line for a gutter runner to run through. So how are you going to do that? Okay, I'll move. Alright. I'm going to have to storm Vermin, I guess, blitz him, so maybe move. We'll leave one gutter runner free, move, or maybe move the thrower over here. I don't know. So that's that space does not provide an assist, right? He because you're to adjacent be to the to the tomb guard. Here. Well, it needs to be one space down. But yeah. if you stand there, you're blocking the hole you're trying to open. That's true. So you have to decide. What do you want to do here? Do you want to throw a one die block, or no. do you want to get a two die block, but then have to make at least one dodge after that? The second one. Okay, I think that's probably correct. So he can go. All right. Stop clicking on. You have not selected already, you don't have to click him anymore. So not there, right? Because you'd have to dodge to get there. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna have your Storm Vermin do the Blitz, because he's got block and he's more likely to succeed. Alright, buddy. I think you should throw it from the space yeah. just below the Tomb Guard. Just below... Below. But yeah, right there. Because that way your, your Gutter Runner will be able to run through. Get him! Get him! Nice. Okay. Yeah, push him like there and then don't follow, I think? Okay. Smack! For maximum clearance. So, is this this guy? Yeah. You just run over there and get next to him. To make his life difficult. Uh, you're taking an, an additional jo dodge there. Right, so getting to here is going to cost you one dodge. And then you get there and you're adjacent to the ball carrier. So just leave it there, I guess. Yeah, you could take additional dodges to get yeah. behind the ball carrier. Um, which would prevent that skeleton next to you from being able to blitz you up. Oh, you pressed the button and changed the camera. I guess I did. Camera. Uh, I don't know how I did that, but okay. It's probably fine. Actually, this is probably better, honestly. Yeah. Hmm. That's a good question. Do, do your other dudes, you've already used your blitz, so you don't really have a lot of uh, like, punching power, but do you want to move some guys around to try to... What do you think? Alright, I'm out of... <laughs> I'm taking too long to think. I'm still so... Yeah, no, you're doing fine. You're out of fine. practice. Uh, okay, they're lining up to punch your, uh, to punch your gutter runner. This is the only, the only option they really have. Because they had to try to punch him off. But he's a tough dude. No, he's not. He's no, a not. he's a slippery dude. What I was trying to say by he's a tough dude is that he has the dodge skill. And we've talked a little bit about how the dodge skill allows you to re-roll dodges, right? Ooh. Yeah. But it does something else. Mm. If you hit a player with the defender stumbles face mm -hmm. on the attack die and he has dodge, he doesn't go down. It acts like a push. So it can sometimes be tough to knock a gutter runner down. Uh, they managed to find the pal. Wow. He set up that three die block, you know? That's rude. Okay, dude. He's fine. He got his bell rung a little bit. He'll be okay. That was my because I got the touchdown. Is it? Oh, oh yeah. Sneak. Oh, Faffle sneak. Your MVP so far. <laughs> well, no, no, Although Faffle traditionally sneak. in Blood Bowl, MVP stands for most violent. Uh, it was a tomb, tomb riding kick. That's oh, fine. His armor didn't even break. How hard could the hit have been? His armor didn't even break. Oh, what am I gonna do? Okay. You can hit the ball carrier, right? You can have your thrower just like run over to that space like by the sideline there and just throw a one die block. So your, your quest, the question you have here is is there a play you can find that's better than that? Is there a better way to deal Standing with this? Standing up? Carrier? No, I don't. Well, you should know. probably stand up. Yeah, if you're gonna stand your dudes up, you should do them before you do that before you do anything risky. <laughs> Standing up can't fail. Sorry, dude, you're gonna be distracted. Please. Yeah, he's doing a fine job. Um, no, I mean I don't know. What do you think? What's your What's your play for dealing with this ball here? Because the the one die block's risky, right? Yeah. Most of the faces are successful, but there is just a one in six chance that you're gonna. Here's the thing. I don't really care though that much. As long as I'm keeping them from getting down here. Okay, sure. You know? I think I'm still good on that. Okay. 
Perfectly sensible. I'll support this space. Yeah. And if you click your player first, you're going to have to click one extra time, right? Yeah. Alright. This is a... Uh, it's a risky play, and you've been rewarded for your faith. Yay! Nuffle likes it when you do risky stuff, sometimes. Uh, follow seems dangerous. Oh! That. Oh, you knocked him out, too. The odds that they're going to be able to score now are so low. Because they're so bad at picking the ball Murderous little beasts. Okay, now your guy blitzed so he can move. I would move him so he's not adjacent to the sideline. Yeah. Uh, we haven't talked about crowd surfing, but it's real dangerous to leave a player adjacent to the sideline. Yeah, honestly, you just back up and let them fumble over the ball. Yeah. Hey, to be perfectly honest, with only three turns worth of movement left, they already might be unable to score. I was trying to go one space deep into the attack know. zones. Yeah, get a decent punch here. Let's crack some skulls. I would probably push him away from the ball. In general, don't push enemies toward the ball. You could try to set up enough rats around that Tomb Guardian to give him no, a good, no, good thwack. No. I th you can do it, actually. Uh -huh. um, if you move both of the gutter runners over there, you'll have... No, no, not that one. You can't punch that one. There's a rat over there who hasn't taken his turn yet. You see the white circle? Yeah. If you get... All you need is three assists to get a two-die block on a Tomb Guardian. If you run both of these gutter runners over. So this Tomb Guardian? Yeah. No, that's... Again, you're trying to run deep. Yeah, just go to here. Show move, boss. We're not afraid of you, zombie man. Yeah. We're murderous little beasts. Truer, truer oh, words never spoke. Okay, okay. Yeah, get him. Oh, I'm pushing him. Come on. Yeah, but he's a tomb guardian. He doesn't count. Okay. Uh, I guess that's it. It's a good turn. Let's see if they can even pick the ball up. They do so. uh, They do have three team rerolls left, because they keep getting free rerolls. Yeah. Like, they really need them. But honestly, even with a reroll, they only have, like, a 75% chance to pick up the ball. And that sounds like a high number. But, man, you play Blood Bowl... <laughs> play Blood Bowl for a little while, and you're going to be like, oh, I never want to do anything that's only 75% likely to work. And he picked it up with no problem whatsoever. Okay, that's fine. He stopped moving afterward. He didn't move forward. Um, so they only have two turns of movement left on their ball carrier. He can't, he actually can't get to the end zone. Now, they still could try a pass. Mm -hmm. It's not impossible for a Camry pass to work. It's very unlikely. Yeah. But, so you're going to want to be a little bit careful about wanting to, about letting any of the players get to get I think the only guy who is even a danger is this dude on the left who blitzed. Lyman got KO'd. Honestly, that's, that's lucky. He's having a great day. Yeah, if you can knock down this dude who threw the blitz, I think you, you will make it so that he actually they literally cannot win. You don't need a blitz to do this. Right? You just punch him with that thrower. I was wondering if that maybe I should get an assist. But you already have an assist. Yeah. Stop clicking. Yeah. Stop clicking on your players. They're already selected. Ah, no, no. All right. Well, now you can blitz him. Yeah, yeah. Don't push him closer to the end zone. So follow up. So you provide an assist, and then have like a storm vermin come over and sock him. Oh, wait, from from below, right? So you're pushing him away from your end zone. Yeah, like that. Take that. Take that. Take this. I'm done. This. Okay, the both down works because your guy has. Oh no, the both down doesn't work. His guy has blocked oh. too. That's a blitz rod. <laughs> oh no. Well, honestly though, it's fine. If you move your gutter runner, like, to the space down into the left of your vermin, your storm vermin. Right here. Yeah, like there. 
Um, all of a sudden, this blitz route like, has nowhere to go. Right? Yeah, that's true. He's completely surrounded by tackle zones. I think you've won the game. Woohoo! Now it's just a matter of losing as few of your players as possible. <laughs> while simultaneously trying to... So do you want to try to dodge that gutter runner out? Or is just going to take the punches? Uh, let's try to dodge out this. Okay. So yeah, you're going to have to dodge... Go. Yeah, dodge out through one of the minus one spaces. Into an open space. It's, it's two dodges, but you're pretty good at dodging. Go for it! <laughs> Slippery Ooh. dudes. Yeah, it was a three or higher dodge, and then a two or higher dodge. You rolled a pair of fours. Rolled a pair of fours. Careful, you don't want to dodge into tackle zones when you can avoid it. Right, so you can dodge out to the yeah. These guys are a little bit less good at it. Oh no! Yeah. Oh, his armor broke. <laughs> it's KO'd. Ah. Bad news. Owie. Like I said, I'm pretty sure they can't win now. If their players are too slow. This is their turn 15. Yep. And then it's my turn 15. No, I went first. Yeah, you went first this half, so it'll be your turn 16, then their turn 16. Um, this is not a strategy that will work against the majority of teams. Most teams are faster than Kemri. Mm -hmm. um, but you could play sort of a similar way against um, dwarves, who are also very punchy and slow. And that's part of the fun of the game, right? Like all the specific matchups and... Yeah, figuring figuring out what the enemy team is bad at and taking advantage of mm -hmm. it while minimizing how much they can take advantage of what your team is bad yeah. at. Like with all the dodging outs that you don't get punched so much. Uh-oh. Okay, he had a both down and a push. He's a coward, so he took the push. Put all the figures on the ground and let Nuffle sort him out. That's my mind. Ooh. He's got a mauling. Ah, it's a stop, whatever. Suck cut. Suck cut. I like this game of names. I like how sharp some of them sound. Wow. That was a bad idea. What are you doing? Yeah, well, you get to pick. Oh. Wow. So the, the dice are red, indicating that that was a... Oh, you what we call a goat. What that. we call a negative two die block. I think it's desperate. Yeah, he's just looking for some points, I think. You should also look for some points. Punch the crap out of that dude. Yeah, this is your last turn, and it, it actually doesn't matter what you do. You have won the game, so... It's just a matter of trying to find some star player points. Which is what the uh, experience resource is called. So, can you find another punch that you like? I don't think you're going to be able to find another two die. Do the blitz. He blitz that. <laughs> we move this guy here and then blitz with no wait, That's a, yeah. Move here. Those guys are all all gutter runners. They're all bad at punching. Well, he's gonna be Two straight is rough. Yeah. I see no, I see what you're saying. Uh you're gonna be able to get one die block out of this? Oh whatever. Yeah. Screw a tomb guardian. Show yeah. no fear. Nuffle uh -huh. rewards the brave. Should, um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's, you know, Nuffle's a tricky, he's a tricky guy. It's hard to understand who he wants you. Because he rewards yeah. the brave, but he punishes the foolhardy. <laughs> and it can be tough from moment to moment to figure out which one of those things an action is. <laughs> yeah, just dodge out. Let him, let him injure as few of your players as possible. Yeah. You have another good dodge there with that, that guy. Yeah, if you dodge down into the left. Into that space. Into this space? Yeah. It's as safe as anywhere else. It's not adjacent to anyone. Okay, so now he's only going to get to throw one punch this turn, because it's going to have to be a blitz. He doesn't have right. any standing punches. Look at all the blood. Oh, I forgot you were There's not actually that much blood for a, for a Blood Bowl game, I yeah. This has actually been pretty a pretty soft affair. Where are you going? Where do you he's, think going? He's executing his plan. Yeah, but... It's only going to take him two more turns to use the end zone. Okay. My suspicion is that, listen, a lot of these dudes literally don't have eyes. <laughs> so I think they may not know how close the game is to being over. Oh, it's look how excited he is, too. He's like doing a dance. He's like, he's, yeah, he's getting there. He's doing it. He's doing my job. Well, I feel kind of bad for him, though. Yeah, I mean, 
they were trying to kill you the whole game. He's so sick now. He's like. All right. Smells like a fight is about to happen. I yeah, don't I mean, think they're, that's they're what trying, that smell they're trying is. to line up. <laughs> I assume that they're gonna throw a blitz somewhere here. There it is. There it is. Oh, he's what? <laughs> he's ah. spite blitzing a gutter runner. Oh, he got him. Oh, that's rude. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Couldn't even hit him hard enough to break the armor. That's just embarrassing. Okay, oh, well, Elise, God. congratulations. Woohoo! You are, as far as these viewers know, you've never lost a game of Blood Bowl. Yeah. What's that feel like? I feel like a winner. You level up my coach. I don't. I don't have any idea what that does. I'm Okay, so after the game, you get to roll the winnings die. You got a two, so Ooh. you will get 40,000 monies. I would re-roll it. <laughs> Everybody gets to roll the winnings die. Uh, I got a three. Even the loser. But the winner gets to re-roll it if he wants. Yeah. It's yeah, not it's much better. Well, it's better. All right. Uh, your team gains some fan factor, Ooh. which will help you out a little bit in some of the kickoff events. And if you click over to uh, statistics up there, up at the top... You can see some things that happened here. Yeah. The Immortal Oasis had the ball wow. far, far more than you did. 81%. They successfully punched you in the face 45 times. Please. Yeah, a bunch of cowards. Now hit, uh, hit SPP. There, star player points. These are the experience mm -hmm. resources. Unfortunately, none of your players got enough SPP to win the game. So what happened here is Patch Lutch uh, successfully injured an opposing player with a punch. That's mm -hmm. two points. More Faffle Sneak got a touchdown, mm -hmm. that's three points. And Creeful Sneak is your MVP. <laughs> Yay, Creeful Sneak! The MVP is a randomly selected player <laughs> on each team <laughs> who just gets anything. five star player points. You didn't do anything. So you get, a, you get a slow drip of star player points even if you're doing terribly. But he has a cute name. You will sneak. always get SPP as displayed by uh, Nesherkiyash Bithtep over there. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so now what? Now he close. All right. This would be... Uh, if you click on your team's banner there at the top, this would be where you could level dudes up. Uh, mm -hmm. If you go to your team roster, okay. you can see you could, at this point, hire more players with uh -huh. your winnings money if you manage to accumulate 50,000 whole money. You'll also notice over there in the corner you have some more options. Mm -hmm. uh, you can hire cheerleaders or assistant coaches. I would not do those things in general. <laughs> you can buy more team rerolls. Uh, but after team creation, they double in price. Very expensive. Yeah. Uh, so it's good to get them during team creation. And you can hire an apothecary, which is a thing I might suggest yeah, you do. I think I will do that. What the apothecary does is once per game, you can re roll an injury roll on the player. Um, it can be very valuable for keeping a, a valuable player from dying or losing an important point of statistics because you mm -hmm. can take injuries that will permanently lower your stats. Um, in addition, you know, he just he helps keep the team on their feet. It's a valuable thing to have, but I rarely buy one during team creation. Yeah. Because your players aren't that valuable during the first game. None of them have any advancement or anything. Mm -hmm. So, and so I prefer if they to try to get. Whatever, eh. I prefer to try to get re rolls while they're cheap. Yeah. Right. Perfect. And then get an apothecary afterward. All right. Well, that was a whole game of Blood Bowl. At least you did it. Ooh. You did. Not only did you play it, you won it. Wow, I'm exhausted. You are the greatest coach in this entire league. Oh, I'm awesome. I'm so awesome it hurts. All the other league coaches are the AI and they're, you know. They're really bad. If I can beat them, it's not great. Okay, so, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I love Me this too. game and there very well may be some more Blood Bowl stuff coming, certainly mm -hmm. when Legendary Edition comes out. Uh, if you want to see more in the meantime, though, if you just cannot wait, go ahead and <laughs> leave it in the comments below. Put likes on the video. Yeah. You know, um, I only know that you guys like stuff when you tell me you like stuff. Yep. So. So please do. Yep. And uh, we'll see you next time. Okay. See you later.